All right, so now that we've pre-drilled the pocket, I'm gonna go to an end mill to rough the pocket out and rough out the outside. I'm gonna go to the Harvey 3, and it is a beast of a tool. My team actually nicknamed it. We called it the zombie cutter. This thing was dead and it just kept coming. All right, so now let's talk surface foot. When I'm in titanium, we're peripheral milling, right? So the old style of machining, you actually drop down and you're only using the tip of the cutter. The cutter's flexing and you're taking a big cut with the tip, right? But now we're creating tool pads that instead of plunging off a dock, they actually ramp into the material, taking the pressure off. And we take a smaller radial, but we drop full depth, utilizing the entire flute length, which brings stability and rigidity and allows us to go much faster. So in titanium, if you look in the machinist handbook, you'll see 175 surface foot as a standard. But in Inconel, it's another story, right? Inconel is much harder than titanium. So the surface foot is on the low end. So instead of 175, you're talking, you know, 50 to 100 surface foot, right? However, because of the advanced tool paths that we're using, the rigidity in tool that we're getting, the coolant that we're using, all of the variables put together, we actually run from 200 to 400 surface foot in Inconel. And we do it in a consistent manner over a long period of time, okay? It's not just something that we're practicing with. So in this specific application, we're gonna run at 210 surface foot, okay? We're gonna keep it on the low end, on the inside and the outside, we're gonna drop all the way to the bottom. Now our radial depth of cut, so we're full depth. So if you look at the outside, you're probably at two and a half times diameter, that's deep. Now, radially, instead of taking a big step over, we're actually gonna take a 4% of diameter step over. And then we're gonna put our feed per tooth at 0.0042, which is gonna give us a feed rate 40 inches per minute, which is incredibly fast for Inconel, and yet it's safe and will be consistent in the cut. So basically what, what you see is the end mill is actually taking about 20 thousandths per cut, but you're 1.2 deep, right? So it's just going around and cutting all the excess material we actually had more material on the outsides on X than we did on Y, and that's why it's going and finishing everything. Now it dropped into the pre-drilled hole, and now it's peripheral milling, and now it's actually cutting material. Now it's going to come over there and rough out this section. All right, so everything's been roughed and we left five thousandths on every surface. So now we're going to come back and we're going to kiss it. All right, so a Harvey 3 end mill, roughing ink and out. It's gonna get dull no matter what. It'll keep going and sometimes go for hours. But since we're looking for a perfect surface finish on these walls, I'm simply going to use a different tool to come back and kiss the side. So now we're using a different Harvey 3 end mill to actually finish the part. Now with tool four, we're gonna drop into where we previously roughed and we're just going to kiss the bottom. But guess what? Instead of a 20,000 step over, my step overs are much greater now because I don't have all of that material to cut through. I'm only cutting the bottom surface and I just want it to be beautiful. 
right? So I don't want all those lines. So now instead of a 20,000 step over, I actually have a greater step over. All right, so when it comes to the speeds and feeds, on the surface footage, it's exactly the same, 210 SFM. But the chip load, the feed rate per that revolution, I've dropped in half. So instead of being four thousandths, we're at two thousandths chip low, so 0 0.002, which gives us a cutting feed rate of 19 inches per minute, all right? So we already know with the current RPMs at 40 inches a minute, it can rough all day, boom, 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 right? But now all we've done is taken the feed rate, dropped it in half, so that we can allow those cutters to work and give us a perfect surface finish. So the tool comes down, ramps into the bottom, comes over here, drops down, ramps into the bottom. Because the tool is pretty long and taking the entire wall and I want to have a perfect finish, I'm actually finishing the inside wall and then I'm gonna do a spring pass just to catch any of the deflection, right? So the tool with the pressure is gonna to wanna to deflect a little bit, which is gonna make it so you might have a perfect tolerance up here, but the bottom might be a little bit small because the tool deflected outwards. All right, so now I'm coming on the outside. I'm simply kissing the outside, doing a 2D contour all the way around it. Flip around to the back. Just doing a 2D contour all the way around. I'm taking a 5,000th finish pass. There's my spring pass. So I'm not cutting extra material. I'm just picking up anything that was left because the tool deflected. Because I want those walls to be perfect and perpendicular to that top surface. I took my first cut right there. Took my second cut to finish that surface. All right, so now we've come back and actually done all our finish passes to kiss all the surfaces and the bottom of the pocket to make it all perfect and to size.